Sometimes I wonder whether my attempts to improve my productivity are in fact expertly disguised procrastination efforts. Reasons being that I've been making these videos for over 4 years now and I don't seem to be able to churn them out any faster. On the contrary, I've become slower, no matter how many screens I have or how fast my computer is. But that didn't stop me from my latest attempt, introducing an incredibly fast custom NAS that can be accessed via the network, but also directly using a Thunderbolt cable from my MacBook Pro. Leveraging the theoretical 40 gigabits transfer speeds, essentially turning it into a hybrid between a network attached storage and a direct attached storage, or how the Germans would say, das NAS. Let me try to explain what I'm doing here. The goal is to create a custom PC, in this case an ITX build, and run TrueNAS Scale on it, an open source OS designed for network attached storage systems. But then go one step further and also add the functionality to directly connect my computer using the built in Thunderbolt 4 port on the back, theoretically creating a 40 gigabits bridge between the two systems. This would allow me to first use it as a standard NAS, but then when I do need that speed, get it instantly. Now for context, in the past couple of years I've been editing Office Synology NAS and it has always worked, but the physical drives are noticeably slow, even with the added SSD caches. However, I'm not trying to completely replace it. Instead, I want to create an additional editing pool, built for speed. Let's start off with the first chapter, where I'll talk about the hardware. While in the second it's all about the TrueNAS configuration, before concluding with some thoughts on the whole thing and why I'm actually doing this. So, if you're looking for a video about network attached store solutions combined with a highly sophisticated German lesson, this video is perfect for you. Or in German, perfect. Perfect. I once again went with an ITX system for two reasons space and because I somehow snagged one of Teenage Engineering's free Computer 2 cases. Now, as the packaging of this thing will tell you, it wasn't actually intended to be free, but they ran a truly daring marketing campaign a couple of months ago, and I somehow snagged one up, only having had to pay for the shipping. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This case is a bit experimental, but I thought it might just be good enough for my needs. Besides, it does look pretty darn cool, both in its entirely flat packed and final evil form. For the mainboard, I went with the ASRock Z690 Phantom Gaming ITX TB4. The important part here is a bit at the end, which refers to the Thunderbolt 4 connection on the back. It is a bit older, released in 2021, but it was the only one with Thunderbolt that was available to me at the time. Obviously, moving away from ITX would have helped, but I am very fond of this form factor. As to why Thunderbolt, well, I edit my videos on a MacBook Pro these days, so this type of connection is, I believe, the fastest format I have. In retrospect, I probably could have also gone with something like USB 4, but I digress. I want to take the opportunity and quickly talk about the hybrid aspect of the solution again, because my first idea was to actually go for a motherboard with a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection, that or use a dedicated network card of the same speed. However, a solution like that would have required a wired Ethernet connection to my MacBook Pro, which I didn't want. The reason being that I used to have a 5 gigabit Ethernet adapter that kept dying on me and delivering performances that were, well, all over the place. Then at some point I came across Thunderbolt, and since this is built into the Mac, I thought maybe this is the solution. Besides, I've been eyeballing true NAS for a while now and having a, well, true NAS also allows me to run a small media server and a bunch of other niceties. Technically I could have and did do that on my Synology NAS as well, but I was also looking for something that consumed a little less power and would be whisper quiet, so switching to M.2 drives was very enticing to me. Speaking of those, I picked two 2 terabyte Crucial T500s. Not the best, not the biggest, but solid and I got them at a good price. Another note here, this system isn't intended for permanent long-term storage, so I don't need a massive amount. Its main goal is to be a fast editing pool. Once projects are finished, they will be moved to cold storage, aka my hard disk based NAS. So let's start by putting this thing together. For the memory, I went with 32 gigs by way of two 16 gigabyte sticks, which might be total overkill, but let's call it insurance for future upgrades or use cases. The CPU was a bit of a gamble, both in terms of its capabilities, but also the fact that I had to buy a used one on eBay. 
Reason being that I wanted the Intel Core i3 14100T, with the T being the important part, referring to the base TDP of 35 watts. It also includes an integrated GPU, which is great news in terms of thermals. Especially since I paired it with the Noctua NH-L9i, which should be sufficient long term with little to no noise, which, spoilers, I can confirm worked great. For the power supply I went with the Corsair SF750, which is a known suspect and popped up on this channel so often now that it might seem a bit sponsory, but I assure you, this is not the case. I do have a sponsor though, me. That's right, the cheese shop is open for business and will soon stock a new item ready for the colder days up ahead, so head on over to shop.cheeseturbulence.com if you're in need of a little seasonal cheese. Anyway, for the operating system I'm using an additional dedicated Samsung 850 EVO with 500 gigs, as TrueNAS requires separation between storage and OS. Putting everything together was a lot more fun than expected, and as much as this case daunted me when I first held it, I must applaud its ingenuity. Building in here felt more like playing around with a giant plastic origami than a computer case, and that was truly a lot of fun. It also feels absurdly sturdy once fully constructed, but also a bit scary. The mainboard is just clipped in and on one side came dangerously close to a pair of capacitors. Or take a look at how the power button works. I mean, I get that this is technically the same mechanism as we have in buttons, but exposed, but still. There's also the risk that by pushing it too hard you could break it. This is a general rule of thumb for the entire case though. Take these latches here for example, which secure the side panel that can be opened after the build, to easily access the insides. It's neat and very easy to use, but I worry about the longevity. Despite the fragility though, I must admit this is one good looking box. Or in German, eine attraktive Schachtel. Eine attraktive Schachtel. Let's move on to the next part, the configuration of TrueNAS. I'll be skipping a detailed look at the installation as there are way more qualifying videos out here on YouTube. Instead, I want to focus on what it did after the installation. Well, technically there was a whole thing with the CPU as it wasn't compatible with the BIOS version and therefore didn't boot, so I had to flash the BIOS and I didn't have a memory stick, so I spent the whole evening trying to find a workaround, but that's not really the topic of this video. Anyway, eventually I made it. As this is my first time using TrueNAS, I kept mostly to the default settings, but I made sure to set up the two M.2s as a single storage pool. Then it was time to check the network. The mainboard has a built-in 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port, which I've hooked up to my compatible switch, and created a few SMB shares for me to access. Being a little too impatient, I immediately transferred my last project and did a full export just to see how much faster it would be. The results? 39 seconds. Yeah. That's not much, and not what I hoped for. It has to be noted though that I did both exports, the one from my hard drive base NAS and the new system, via Wi-Fi. Why? Well, I don't have an Ethernet dongle anymore, so this is the only way at the moment. Meaning there's still hope. So with my fingers crossed, I immediately began setting up the Thunderbolt connection by hooking up both systems with the Bolti cable. After which I opened the network interface settings on TrueNAS and started looking for it, and here's where things started to derail a bit. For some reason TrueNAS didn't see the Thunderbolt port. I checked the BIOS, I even reset my entire configuration at one point, nothing. Now to be honest, I don't exactly know how I got it working, but I know for sure that enabling Thunderbolt boot support in the BIOS is a crucial step. Which incidentally also reveals the biggest flaw of this setup. It only works when it is plugged in during boot. Unplugging and replugging will sever the connection indefinitely. This is a huge bummer and I couldn't figure out a way to fix this, which makes this entire setup feel a bit shakier than I'd like it to be. But let's ignore that for now and continue with the setup. So after finally seeing the connection in the true NAS network settings, I was able to set a manual IP address for both to establish a one-to-one -one connection. If you're now thinking, wait, isn't this also going by a network? Aren't we using Thunderbolt? Yes. And yes, at least that's as far as I understand it. You see, networking is part of the Thunderbolt specifications, and TrueNAS has something called Thunderbolt Net, also known as IP over Thunderbolt. The MacBook Pro has this too, and both essentially create virtual Ethernet adapters to interface with each other. Pretty cool. At least, I think so. I never heard of this before, and I'm pretty stoked about it. After having done this, I simply hit Command K while in Finder, and entered the IP address of the Thunderbolt connection. It's important to use the manually set IP address here, and not the Ethernet one, otherwise it will use, well, that one. 
I of course didn't invent this. Truth be told, I pretty much followed along a tutorial I found on the TrueNAS forums by a more capable user named Efficiency. I'll link the original post in the description below if you want to check it out. But the burning question is, how much faster is it compared to the previous two methods? Will my videos finally be done twice as fast? Three times as fast? Maybe I should lower my expectations. Let's be a bit more conservative and say 25% faster. Well, that's a bummer. Or in German, beschissen. Beschissen. Well, at least I didn't break anything in this video, which is more than what I can say about my last one. Jokes aside, I learned the hard. No, the expensive way that the bottleneck wasn't actually the hard drives, nor the network, but the rendering capabilities of the M4 Max in my MacBook Pro. In an odd way, this kind of confirmed my suspicion that exporting over Wi-Fi was never the issue and not as stupid as I once thought. Mind you, this does not cancel out my own stupidity for not checking the rendering performances beforehand. But this entire endeavor wasn't futile. The export times are just one part of the equation. There's a lot of areas where the impact was actually noticeable, big time. For example, in one of the recent updates to DaVinci Resolve, my editing software of choice added a new feature to automatically sync media files from folders. This means that linked folders will automatically update in Resolve whenever new files are added, changed. This doesn't sound like much, but not having to manually drag the files into the media pool is one of those little life improvements I didn't know I wanted. No, needed. But what does this have to do with the NAS? Well, every time Resolve wants to update the folders, it obviously needs to access the drives the files are stored on. On my old NAS, this meant that more often than not, the drives would have to spin up first. This slight delay caused the entire editing suite to freeze up and wait for the sync to complete. And I store quite a lot in those linked folders, not just the footage, but also effects, music and memes. I collect and keep these assets for every video I make to create sort of a local library in order to speed up my editing, which ironically slowed down with the auto-sync feature enabled. But after moving this to the new TrueNAS system, I am now happy to report that it finally works as intended. Syncing is entirely unnoticeable. In general, accessing files has become super snappy. Searching too, it's a delight to scrub through footage and indistinguishable from having the files stored locally. Speaking of that, let me explain why I don't do that. It concerns work, or my day job to be more precise. Since I've returned to the office, my editing habits have changed drastically, moving from the comforts of my desk to the limitations of the commuter train. Now, the keen observers will have noticed in the footage that I don't carry my NAS with me, even though this new one has a neat little handle. Instead, I'm editing using proxies, meaning generating smaller portable files on my MacBook Pro instead of carrying the source files with me. If you're now wondering why I didn't just put the original files on the MacBook Pro, well, there's simply not enough space, and besides, I don't want to fill up a company computer with personal video files. Editing on here is already enough of a mix. On top of that, the proxy workflow actually allows me to kill everything locally without any fear of losing anything. I can just regenerate at any time or work directly off the source files if needed. So where does this faster NAS, or in this case DAS, come into play? Well, unlike exporting, generating proxies is almost four times as fast as before. This and the transfer speeds to the NAS have seen such high speed increases that I actually do think that this was beneficial, very beneficial. But it is not perfect. The problem with the system not recognizing the Thunderbolt connection unless it was connected during the boot up process is a bit annoying. It only takes a minute or two, but it still requires a manual process. However, the near silent operation, the fact that I'm using about half the power compared to my old Synology NAS, and the freedom to do whatever I want to the system is making it worthwhile, at least for now. But what do you think? Is this something you'd ever try out or would have an idea on how this could be improved? As usual, I'm very curious about your thoughts. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope it was easy enough to follow along. Next time we're talking about something small again. Very small. Or in Swiss German, Chli. Chli.